or any kind of final advice you'd, you'd like to give for people that, you know, really want to take that next step and kind of push towards being pro players, then I'd love to hear it. The most important one, you're never going to get a second chance to get a first impression. Never. Make sure to come up in time, even before the time, like, if you have opportunity to like uh, have a tryout and people said okay come at like 4 p.m come to discord at like half with like 3 total like something just do, make sure that people see that you're fully committed you want to improve you want to do everything like if, if you just actually want it like you have like no offers like you, you like you want you want to make it like you want to hit it like just try to do everything possible My name is Aplox and I'm a professional Valorant coach. This series of podcasts is aimed at bringing knowledge to aspiring professional players in the Valorant scene and the wider esports scene. We talk to professional coaches, professional players, performance coaches, people that work in organisations to bring you the value that you need to become a professional player. Today I'm talking with NRG's new analyst slash assistant coach, Vladkor. Vladkor is so well known in the community. He is an absolutely insane human being, so fucking funny, and really, 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 really fucking good at lineups. He has so much experience to, to draw on, to bring to this interview, all of his experience as a professional analyst, all of his ranked experience. I mean, he's a very, very accomplished ranked player, achieving the highest ranks in the game. Really, this is an episode that if you're a player just trying to improve at ranked, or if you're looking to try and make a career for yourself, as, as well as even looking at content creation, Vladkor is the man to absolutely listen to and to take some advice from. Really hope you enjoy this episode. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Yeah, so where to start? I think your, your journey's been quite an interesting one, right? When it comes to, <laughs> yes. to esports in general. Yep. Um... I guess, I guess my, my, my question is, how did you, like, where did the kind of, like, idea of lineups come from right i think that's like the thing that you've really become quite famous for how did you end up doing that i mean there was like it was like lo lo long coming i guess because uh, i i came from cs uh, and personally i liked the lineup stuff and like strategy a lot back in the uh, back in the days in csgo i used to i never comp compete in like normal team i just played like semi-pro sometimes like with just my friends and uh, some mixed teams plus i just uh, like couldn't have like normal opportunity to play because of the like yeah, internet issues and all that stuff. And back in the 2019, I guess, I just got a normal internet and I start uh, playing face it. Mm. And I got like a new account for it, just uh, like a new page in my life. And I like got level 10 for like 150 games. It's basically like Radiant in Valorant. Mm -hmm. Like we have it's, like 150 games on the new account. And I thought, okay, maybe maybe esports is like kind of uh, kind of my future. Maybe there is like maybe small chance there is. And I started doing a lot of lineups. I just started like learning a lot of stuff, watching the pro the pro games, all those things. And I and I I knew there was a guy uh, who was doing the kind of same content that I'm doing right now in Valorant. Is like the Nart out, Nate out here or Nart out here? Like he have like two accounts. Basically the same thing. Like he just watches the pro pro game. So like somebody submitting the lineup to him, and he just posted it on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, uh, everywhere. And uh, I just thought, okay, that's maybe good. Uh, then the Valorant came in, and uh, I just played like normal legends without lineups, like the. Th there was not that much lineups, anyways. Like there was like breach. Uh, there was no KO at this point. There was like mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. all the stuff. So like I even Killjoy, like uh, she just came in like late uh, summer. It's Killjoy. literally only Sova at the beginning, right? Yeah, only so only Sova and Viper, and Viper was like, uh, man, who the fuck I plays Viper? Yeah, yeah, right at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah so. Uh, I, I didn't focus on the lineups, and then my first team when I transitioned to lineups was like, I guess, in the early 2021. Uh, I started playing Sova, and 
I just like w one day and I knew like a lady like half of the stuff that like you have to know like basically like, literally took me like one day and I thought okay maybe I actually like this and then I just started playing playing a lot on it and uh, idea of posting lineups came to my head in middle of 2022 because I was just doing like some side coaching like uh, just like coaching like uh, some friends like whatever just and one of my friends asked for like care lineups like just on like uh, Ascent, like uh, overall. I recorded a video with like one way flashes. Like for example, on uh, Ascent, on K, you can like uh, climb on top of the boxes on A side mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. when you're going to the heaven. And you can like one way flash for yourself. It's like uh, it bounces out of the wall and it's like blind uh, everyone on heaven, but doesn't blind you when mm -hmm. you like crouch up in the box. Yeah, yeah, I know the one. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. And I just showed like five or six of them like on the same video. I sent it to him, and then I just thought, okay, maybe, maybe I'm gonna post it on Twitter, whatever. I just, <laughs> I just posted it in, on Twitter. Maybe I'm gonna even find the link on this tweet. And like, uh, I'm legit asking people on the Twitter like, in the in the first tweet. I'm just saying in this video, like, should I post more? Like, do you like it or not? And this tweet instantly blew this up like 100, 100, 150 likes or something. And I just thought, okay, maybe because like uh, at these days it was like September. Or, no, it was August uh, 2022. Yeah, and I had like 300 followers. The next tweet uh, blew up in uh, late September 27, I guess, and it was the um, Brazilian uh, Brazilian uh, insider, I guess, like George Geddes type thing, but like from mm. uh, from the from yeah from the Brazil the, from the Brazil community, uh, no known or known how like something like that his nickname. He posted my video and it got like 11,000 likes. <laughs> and, and I thought, okay, that's that's getting serious. And like, uh, just in like uh, end of September, I got this uh, tweet, and like literally one month uh, away, like in 25 October, I got the offer from Fireflex, the like tier two Turkish team, yeah. to be an analyst. So that 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 that's how it is. How I came to lineups. It's it's crazy, right? How quickly it, it can blow up. And I think yeah. um. I I think the story that you have is something that a lot of people could be doing. You know, there are a lot of there are a lot of people that know lineups that could be doing lineups that aren't posting lineups, right? Yeah. Players, I think, or e even more than this, right? Like when it comes to like breaking down a retake or, or things like that. How yeah, sure. how much of an impact, you know, if you if you like meeting a player, how how much of an impact do you think that really can have on the direction of their career? Uh, so basically, uh, I'm just gonna answer under like two things at the same time. The the first thing like the, that a lot of people actually can post and started posting lineups is actually like was not that that not that much in Twitter and Valorant because mm. like uh, in CS, Twitter is not that big. Like if you compare like tw Twitter stats for Valorant and uh, CS, usually mm. Valorant have most uh, like views whatever. But like how big the CS community willing to improve? That's actually crazy because like uh, mm. there is always the people who are willing to improve posting lineups, posting stats, all that stuff, and like. Uh, I just started doing the same thing in uh, Twitter of Valorant because I knew that there is like something missing. Nobody was like there was every Jonas, Snapex, all that people who like was doing the content, but it was just purely YouTube and sometimes like TikTok or YouTube shorts. Mm -hmm. Nobody was doing it in Twitter. Like m maybe there was some some of them, but like you can there was like uh, just huge boom after after I came up with the lineups in Twitter because like I remember like. Uh, late days or like maybe December or like November was like literally everybody was messaging messaging me in Twitter and saying, "Bro, please stop doing this!" Like just my whole timeline Twitter is just full of lineups. <laughs> like I can't see anything. There's just people posting lineups now, <laughs> and I can't couldn't do anything with this. Uh, when it, when it comes to like career, uh, I guess it's very good to post like lineups and all these like breakdown videos if you're like as aspiring to be a coach or like analyst maybe because that's what actually shows like your understanding of the game. And uh, if if you're a player posting lineups, it's kind of it's kind of good if you're maybe agile, like because mm -hmm. uh, like for example, it will, it creates opportunity for you to be a, like a game leader plus like you understand the whole thing like uh, the utility usage. Maybe you can help your coach to uh, create some stats because like if you actually know like some good lineups and like you understand because like there uh, there is a two things like ju just knowing lineups it's nothing. The point mm -hmm. is like why why I came up like why. Uh, a lot of uh, pro players started following me, following me at like at very very early start, like when I had like three thousand followers or maybe less. There was already like half of the tier one coaches following me. It was not because I was just posting lineups, but because how useful they are. Mm. 
uh, like I, I was always posting like some meta like for example the this tweet that, that I brought up about like eleven thousand likes the one that got taken posted by the Brazilian guy that was not just a, some some crazy lineups no I there was like one week before the KO update that like uh, they changed the lineups uh, with uh, left and right click of flash whereas like uh, uh, left click flash is now blind more and right click flash is blind less in time. Mm, mm. And I just thought, okay, now we can maybe do the self uh, pop flashes with left click. And like, you know, this one on us, and it was like, on, you go, you're going to cat uh, to the short and like you bounce off the wall and it lands in the mm -hmm. garden area. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like self pop flash, even though you're using it from the left click, not from the right side. Yeah. And I just thought, like, and I just thought, okay, maybe there's going to be a new meta, like everyone going to be using flashes like this now for yourself, like with the left click, not the right one. And I just caught like for three maps, like there was like, like 10 minutes videos, I guess, or something like in the, in, in total. And of course it blew up because it was I, I just basically not created the new meta, but like I just uh, helped a lot of people to adjust to the new meta. Because mm -hmm. like there was already lineups that like I just created and like helped them. Uh, and the, the same thing kind of comes to er everything if you talk about lineups and, uh, and even strats, for example. Like if you just uh, analyst who decided, okay, maybe Harbor Viper comp is actually good before loud and just posted it, of course they're gonna blow up because like at one point people are gonna start playing this and everybody gonna say, oh, this guy is good. There is like you don't even have to come to the big examples. Like you already everybody knows about this guy who um, was working in energy or in the ghosts gaming. I don't remember the, uh, this guy. Uh, this guy who's staying behind the um, second uh, round or like um, second uh, first timer meta, where it's like people started buying the first timer like uh, for four hundred and playing full uh, full buy with first timer. Like that was the guy, one guy who created it, and then he just he came to the CS uh, in Team Liquid, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Like. Like everybody will gonna praise you, and like you're gonna be just like uh, I don't know, like uh, posting. Uh, the, the main point of this, like, it's pointless to just post lineups or like find lineups, whatever. You always have to come to a conclusion. Like for example, uh, as I'm doing lineups, I'm never thinking that like, uh, okay, I have to I have to ma make lineup today. No, <laughs> I'm just I, I usually I'm never coming to the custom lobby and saying okay yes like I have to find something no usually I'm just playing or like I'm watching screams or like uh, pro games and I see okay in this situation maybe there will be some useful lineup like maybe he could use the uh, util better and then I'm just coming to the custom lobby and trying to find some that's it yeah exactly it's about the context right it's like okay yeah, I yeah, want sure. to be able to do this execute I want to be able to like for example like masking right like I want to I want to put someone on the opposite side of the map can I have a lineup that they can support a post plan yes, on, exactly. yes. on B site when this guy's been faking A the whole round, right? Like with Viper, yeah. for example. Like those yeah. kind of things I think are like really common. It's the it's the context, right? And I think, yeah, and I think I think for players, I, 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 I actually think, I, I agree with you to some, to some degree. Like I think for IGLs, it's important more kind of for like a macro understanding, right? Like, okay, yeah, I understand yeah. that I want this person lurking. So I've come up with this kind of idea, right? And, yeah, it, sure. and to show that they... That they stand out from the crowd, right? Because th there's so much competition in this space, right? There are there yeah. are so many people trying and to I, make I, it I, pro. I, I like to my example. I like my example of, of Twitter in Valorant because, like, basically, if in Valorant, Twitter is like LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn in normal uh, job. Like, you just yeah. like if you if you don't have a Twitter, you you jobless basically. Like, 99 percent, uh, like uh, nobody gonna look at the ranking stats and like brought up you instantly and just message you. You you can't even message the guy if you don't have a Twitter. Like, for example, mm, if you're like mm. top one in ranking stats, so overall, like in the whole leaderboards, like you have a two thousand uh, hilo, but you don't have a Twitter, or like I have a Twitter but with different nickname. How how somebody gonna message you? You mm. probably already have a, like fifty uh, friend requests, but because you are top one, you're probably not even gonna see the friend request of like somebody <laughs> like a scout or like whatever from the top arc. They just literally can't ma even message you. <laughs> so like you have to have a Twitter, like link it in uh, to the um, uh, tracker GG, because like you can you can like link your uh, social media accounts to tracker mm. GG, so at least people can find you. And the same comes to like agiles and coaches, because like uh, there is, as you said, there is like a huge competition and. Uh, you you have to make sure that you can like uh, show why why you are better than uh, all of them, why you mm. have to take this job because mm. like you j just applying to everyone it's like it's not never gonna work like you have to make sure that people just gonna look at your profile, gonna see like one or two videos and like first impression of these people who are gonna look at you gonna think oh yeah this guy is actually good like this guy is like he knows something. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's all about marketing yourself, right? Really. Yeah, that's, sure, sure. Yeah, that's all. That's yeah. all it's about. So for you, was really that what was. What was your kind of goal when you got into it? Was it, because like you said, you were kind of helping friends. What, what was kind of like your main motivation? Was it more you wanted to help your friends? Was it because you wanted to find a career? What was your motivation at the time? Uh, 
so back in the like before 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 I hit it big like before yeah. I started because there there was like a little gap before this tweet that like blew up and like I started gaining a lot of followers like every day like before this uh, tweet is kind of flashes and between the tweet that like when I first time posted the lineup on Twitter there mm -hmm. was like two months basically and like there was legit like you can even see it on my Twitter account there's like from from August to late uh, September there's like maybe like hundreds of tweets where it's like I getting average like three likes like five likes three, maybe like zero likes even, even like that and like I was just gunny because like I, d I didn't know what to do I was like kind of plateaued in like in real mm. life I didn't know what to do like uh, I had nothing to do basically I was I, I got the how to say the academic year or something like a uh, gap I, I took the gap year in university uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah so like I had nothing to do at, this, at that moment, and I just had to like just play Valorant and uh, like post content. Uh, it was uh, I was I, I was not thinking about like making the, like esports or like uh, getting the team because of the lineups mm. at mm -hmm. that moment before before okay, be, be, uh, before I hit it big. Uh, I was just thinking that okay, maybe I'm gonna help at least people because like mm. maybe it sounds crazy, but I was legit just trying to help people. Like yeah, it, yeah. No, no, at, 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 at first, at first point, I was literally like. It was pissing me off so much that people don't understand how to use utils in ranked games. So at one point, I just started posting on Twitter. I thought, okay, if this guy don't know this flash, I'm just gonna send this link on my Twitter. Just bro, just look at it. Like it's like last tweet, whatever. There was like literally like few situations at the back end of the days when I was just saying, mm, check mm. my Twitter, bro. Like the last tweet, like look at this flash. Please use it next round. <laughs> so yeah. I was just trying to make people playing the game better. That's it. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's. You know, you see the problem and you're like, I can solve this, right? Yeah. I mean, the sky's the limit, right? It's like, screw yeah. it. I can, I can change, I can change this, this kind of problem in esports, right? And yeah, I think, like, yeah, sure. I feel, I feel the same, right? Like this, this whole podcast, you know, like yeah. it's, it's aimed at helping people. If it makes yeah, it sure. big, then cool, right? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a nice outcome, really. But like, the, the goal for me was always to. To like to to bring advice from people that like have experience and they're and you know what they've seen the mistakes that they've made and, and those those kind of things right so that other people can have an opportunity to kind of follow in those footsteps right it's always it's always kind of like that those people that are kind of one step behind giving them a chance to, to kind of learn from from what people have done yeah sure because because like for example i was about to like end the, the whole point that like uh, teaching people because like i, I had never uh, like uh, there was never a goal to like be a like a big guy and the content creator. Like for example, if you're gonna look at the like first like I guess be, uh, yes before I came to the bootcamp I guess in 2K like uh, like be, before like start of the winter of 2020, like before January 2020 probably. Like all my tweets was not even like uh, bad tweets. Like I had no hashtag Wallerant. Like there was like uh, bl bl blank text like without anything without like um, without capital b letters without anything. Like I was just like. There's like uh, three minutes lineups videos for Wiper, like on Icebox, and, and it's like says Wiper lineups Icebox. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> three words. <laughs> like, of course, it was getting like three likes average because like, yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah. find this. And it's a five minute long video that's completely yeah, unedited. Yeah. It just clips from but, one thing to another. But, yeah. That, uh, I still have on YouTube these three videos. I, I made them unlisted, but like they, they used to be public. They, there's like three videos on YouTube Sowa on uh, Breeze, Sowa on Icebox, and the Wiper on Icebox. And there's like these videos, 18 minutes long, each of them. <laughs> And there is no editing. Just every there's light up, lineup. every lineup ever. Yes, yeah. there is no editing. There is just lineup, 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 lineup. I'm not even talking. There is no music. There is nothing. There is just <laughs> play. There is just, there's just Valorant. Pure Valorant and lineups. So, but I think that shows that shows what you were in it for, right? I mean, yeah. it was all about helping people. And yeah. It just uh, came at the same time, like, uh, I started hitting it a bit, uh, hitting it big, so I thought, okay, maybe I have to, like, put more marketing on it, like, uh, make the mm. uh, make the more, like, big, uh, clickbaiting uh, titles, all mm. of that, all, all the mm. stuff, because, like, I can't understand this thing, too, because, like, before the Valorant and because, like, b before the whole, whole esports thing, like, I, I used to work in, like, social media stuff, let's say, because, like, I was just running, like, some uh, few, few accounts on, like, social media based on CSGO, so, like, I already knew how it works. It was mm. not that hard for me just to put two, two things together. So at what point, I, I guess um, I, I want to kind of like to take take a step back, right? So the, the goal was kind of yeah. to help people, but I guess you, 
Did you ever have the goal of being like a professional player? Or was it always kind of like a hobby? Playing the game was always like for fun. Oh, no, sure. Like uh, it was always the goal because like, I mean, the problem was, as I said, like before 2019, like uh, summer of 2019, I had no opportunity to do it because like I had a very bad, inter uh, very, had very bad internet. So I couldn't mm. even play like CS. Uh, like I had like 100 plus ping with pocket losses constantly. And uh, at one point it was how much? Like 16 years old. I was 16 years old. And I had already like one, one try to go pro, it was PUBG, like mm -hmm. 20, uh, 2017, 2018. And uh, I even used to compete like on kind of semi-pro slash tier two maybe. Like in the middle of 20, 2018, I used to play in uh, like s s same group with like Team Spirit, Regis Cadron, maybe you know the teams, like tier two organizations from like CIS region. Maybe, yeah. maybe you know Team Spirit because like they won the like some. Yeah, some, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that, this, uh, there, there was some teams like that. And uh, it's just uh, didn't work out because like uh, PUBG, the PUBG Corp, I don't remember how they, like, Crafton, I guess, they, uh, their name right now. They made a rule that, like, you have to be 18 years old to compete. Um. So, like, and, I, and uh, back in the days in 2018, it was, like, how much? Like, 15 years old. So, like, I couldn't uh, do it. And I just switched to C back to CS. And there was, like, w exactly one year gap between 2018 when they released this uh, rule and 2019 before I got the internet. And this year, <laughs> it was crazy. I was just playing Retake Simulator. Like, literally, there's, like, servers with Retake Simulator. On, on uh, CSGO, and I was playing every day, like, six hours. Like, I was just coming from school, playing six hours retakes. That's it. Like, it's not even a joke. I, I, I guess I still have, like, some voice messages to my friends where it's, like, I'm sitting, like, so tired at, like, 1 a.m. and saying, it's been 10 hours of retakes today. Because <laughs> I couldn't play Face It, and I couldn't play matchmaking. It was, like, uh, as I said, like, very bad internet. So I was just playing retake. Yeah. So when you did get the internet, how did, how did things change? Uh, I was already like uh, kind of good in mechanically because uh, as I said I was playing a lot of the like uh, I, I already had like a lot of the mechanical uh, practice because I was playing retakes plus I uh, understand kind of the uh, marker things uh, at the same time because as I said like when you're playing the retakes you already understand like positioning kind of bo on the both sides like you know how to execute the site you know how to protect the site mm. and you know how to retake it and uh, it was just for me like understand the defaults maybe so like mm -hmm. it was like it, it took me like maybe like one month to understand the defaults. So I was just watch I started watching all the demos on CS, and I guess I uh, I started playing in September. Like I uh, just a uh, new year in school started for me. I started playing in September uh, on new account on Face It, and I got the level ten in uh, mid February, I guess in twenty twenty in twenty twenty in mid February, and then COVID started. And as, as you know, two months later, in the, in the start of the April, there was a wall end. And mm. I just instantly switched it because, like, I knew I got a, I, I got a 10 level face it. There is coming wall end. And uh, I thought, okay, maybe that's a new chance for me. Plus, mm. I already have internet, all the stuff. Like, uh, and plus, I have, like, a little bit of achievement in the before because, like, at, at, at least I was, like, ab above the average. Like, I was, like, uh, kind of radiant uh, rank in the mm. Uh, previous mm. game. So I thought, okay, maybe it's going to help me to find a new team in the wall end. And it's kind of helping me, but not that much, because, like, uh, the whole thing of, like, being a player uh, just fall off because of going to university. And, uh, like, it was just a lot of the uh, real, real, real life problems. Like, I just couldn't, like, focus on the game that much. Like, I couldn't uh, put, like, eight hours a day anymore. So, like, I thought mm. it's, it's going to be pointless, because, like, even if I'm going to find a team, like, I couldn't, I, I, I could start uh, playing uh, scrims at, like, 6 p.m. or something. And it's, like... It's I mean, th there is people who is doing that, but like I, 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 I wanted to commit fully and like get out. Now it's going to be bad. Mm. So you kind of decided that you wanted to focus on on university and I mean, do this I mean, on the side. I, yeah, kind of. I mean, I, I focused on university for like a uh, few months, I guess, and then I just thought, okay, university is not for me, and I just uh, started playing Valiant again and like took the ac academic year after it. Mm. Because like, for example, as I said, like Valiant came in in twenty twenty. I um, got to the university in 2021, and uh, already in 2022 I got the academic year, and I just started doing lineups. So basically, there was like literally like one year step for me mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. time. Uh, and so, I guess I guess kind of what what made you take the the kind of analyst role was did you decide that? Oh, I guess so I, guess, I guess you know because because you could have still said no, I want to I want to focus on being a player, you yeah. know. Uh, the, pro uh, the problem with uh, the analyst role, because like, I thought, okay, that's actually a good offer. For example, like it was already a tier two team, and they uh, been like uh, that probably one of the best organizations in 2K. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so I thought, okay, that's going to be actually a, hu a huge step forward for me because even like, for example, even right now, like I still think that like I still have a chance to compete, like, and it's 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 not like dreams or whatever. Like we we already have like uh, Cupert, for example, the the guy who was yeah, like yeah. analyst and uh, assistant coach, and at the same time he's right now playing in the tier two league in, in Turkish league actually uh, with Digital Athletics. Yeah. So, like there is a chance. Uh, the uh, the point is that like. Uh, why I took the endless role with Fireflex because I thought uh, they had actually pl like promising stuff. Like uh, they had already two coaches, like assistant coach and uh, head coach. Both of them was uh, already like experienced in T1. Uh, Markne was the head coach at that moment, and Mavera was the assistant coach. And um, mm. Mavera already played on first strike on the Turkish league, like yeah. the the, fir the first tournament. And all yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Markne already won masters like regional masters for 2k ah yeah like yeah, the, the, okay. the first masters was regional and like he won the regional yeah. masters as a as a coach if i'm not mistaken already so like uh or player i don't actually remember so the the point is that like they already been so experienced and i thought okay that's actually can work for me like uh, that's gonna be like my first uh, step in esports like i still can like mm. just uh, switch to being a player any anytime because like at, at, at the time when i was taking this offer i was uh 20 years old. Oh, yeah. no, wait. Uh, 19 years old. I, I was 19 years old and I turned 20 like a few months after. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, so you I still was have still lots of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. And you, you still know, you like, still have time now, right? Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm turning 21 in like a March. So it's like, it's, it's nothing basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So is your, in the long term, would you still like to play? Would you still prefer to uh, play? In, in, uh, probably, yes, because like uh, the point is that like, uh, if I'm gonna get an opportunity, for example, like I don't know, like uh, somebody gonna get sick in energy, like, and I have to feel mm -hmm. on like uh, mm -hmm. a tournament or like whatever, come to Mad Madrid, for example, like whatever. Uh, of of course, I'm I gonna, I, I like, I just instantly gonna take this opportunity. I, I hope it's never gonna happen, like in energy. But like for example, like if it, if there's some some offer gonna come to me, like uh, I I'm sure that they're gonna discuss it with Zork and like uh, can I at least like pay the outs, for example, because. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we had this talk already with Zork actually, like, and they fine with it because, like, uh, they asked me instantly uh, what was my like uh, long t long term vision, and yeah. I said that like uh, I'm ready to like uh, take a step forward in like assistant uh, coach maybe later, like whatever. Not the mm. head coach. I'm th I'm thinking I'm not Salah, like uh, the guy who like can be a head coach in like 20 years old. I'm not this guy. Like I don't want to take that much, uh, but like. Uh, taking more responsibility or like even staying in the same uh, job name for example being the analyst but like doing more stuff mm -hmm. like i'm still fine with it like because that's what I actually happened in back in the days in fireflies like uh, when i came to the boot camp i was uh, not only just doing like lineups and like uh, analyzing the enemy teams like at the same time i tried to fix like some uh, sleep uh, schedule things like uh, food term like uh, uh, talking to players mentally like i was like basically performance coach at, this, at the same time Mm, mm. So like I'm just uh, I, I, as you said like before, if I just see the problem and I know that I, ca I can fix it, I'm just going to fix it. That's it. Because mm. like, there is no point for me just stay there if you can just watch how it, like some, something's happening and I can and I know that I, c I, I can change it. But like in the future, if there is like some opportunity gonna come, sure I'm gonna take it. Because like, mm. that's that's the whole point. So talking about being a player, you're. I mean, you're obviously someone that has quite a lot of success in ranked, right? Like you're, <laughs> you're, you're always radiant, you know, you're always kind of achieving like, like, you know, the highest ranks in the game. What uh, advice would you have for people that are kind of trying to, trying to do that, right? Trying to kind of get to that kind of level. Uh, I actually had a, like small talks like a few days ago uh, on chat of uh, Fnatic assistant coach Mini. Mm -hmm. uh, about this thing, uh, he was like making like world review of like one guy who, who was playing ranked. Uh, if you actually want to like, uh, for example, there is like gonna be two advices because like for example, the, 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 for the people who is later like so close to like let's say mortal, like they basically like ascended or like uh, diamond three for example. Yeah. Like uh, for these people, there is gonna be advice just uh, learn one role, and basically like ninety nine percent of time, people who's uh, at these ranks, like below immortal, but like so close to it, or, like below, like on the all the immortal stages, usually these people have two problems. It's either the mechanical or like the macro one, and it's always easier, much easier to fix the me mechanical one because if you have like enough aim, with just enough aim and spamming one like one or two edges, like rain a jet or like rain a race you can get to immortal <coughs> every single act. And mm -hmm. after that, just playing like few acts on immortal, you. At one point, you're gonna realize how to play the game. 
because like you're just gonna uh, meet the same scenarios every single time. At one point you're gonna realize, oh, they're using the omen flash and be main ascent when they're going fast B. So probably I don't have to like stay there open and like getting blind every single time. Like at one point it's gonna come to your mind. So just playing a lot, uh, focus on like few agents. Even even one is enough. Surely mm -hmm. even one is enough. As I said, Reina, because basically like uh, there's like if if you're gonna look at the mm, players like who are uh, getting the smooth accounts, like pro players for example. As soon as I remember, they had like two accounts, like top one, top two. Uh, Scream had uh, the same thing, and I guess um, I, I'm pretty sure there's there was oh yeah, um, Cloud9 Oxy had like uh, top ten radiant on like mm -hmm. two accounts if I'm not mistaken, and like all of them usually spam Reina on the second account, just spam Reina because that's the easiest uh, agent to rank up. Yeah. Uh, if you're lower than a Sen and a Diamond, and you just like started getting an FPS, like in first-person shooter, mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. uh, started getting in like uh, first-person shooter with like utilities, for example, you never played Apex or like so, like Overwatch, mm -hmm. so it's kind of mm -hmm. hard for you to come up with utilities in the same time when you have to like uh, shoot. Uh, I guess just watch a lot of the pro games, or not even pro games, the, like just uh, how pro players playing ranked. Just look at their pattern, look how or how they're using utils, because like. Uh, a lot of the times, like even for pro players, usually when you see how they uh, using the utils and you, the, if they're doing it bad, like most of the time it's just because they're doing it autopilot. They they're not even thinking about it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you uh, like if you're just missing your utils on doing like for example like throw, throwing raise net every single time when you see the enemy, it's not the right thing to do. Like you just have to sometimes like save the raise net for retake or like whatever like combine it maybe with someone. Uh, usually, this this mistakes comes just because you're doing it in autopilot. Just start thinking for, uh, before using every single util. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take a lot of the time for you, probably like one month or even more, because like now you're gonna focus less on your aim and uh, your like time management in terms of utils gonna be worse, because like now you have like this delay before using util and actually like uh, seeing the opportunity to use one. But it's gonna fix, gonna be fixed like in one month, maybe like, if if you play a lot, because like uh, you just, as I said, you're just gonna come up with a lot of scenarios, the same scenarios. When it's like already, you're just gonna realize, okay, in this case, I have to use utils. In this, no, because before you start thinking about it, you're never gonna even like remember these situations. You you just don't even think about them. Mm. Yeah, playing with intention, right? I think that's that's yeah. the phrase that I typically use, and I think it's kind yeah, of yeah, kind yeah. of the term that people throw around. It's it's so. It's so pivotal, right? Yeah, because like you say, if you just go in and you never think about what you're doing, how can you expect to learn, right? Every, every game, in my mind, you know, I'm a scientist by training. I treat every game, or I certainly have done when I, when I was a player, right? It was a treat to everything as an experiment. It was, try this, did it work? Did it not work? Okay, then, and and, and it's, you don't even, you don't necessarily, it doesn't take as much thinking as people think it does yes, right like yes, if you're just going yes. through the process should i do this now or not just okay question yourself, uh, question yourself every single time that's it exactly questions, questions, questions. and i think the point about mechanics i think is so important as well right like i i want to i want to i want to echo that as well right because there is just like a bar that once you cross with your mechanics yeah you're, you're gonna be you're probably gonna be like immortal right yeah, sure. Of At course. least, like uh, there is like uh, as you can see, like there is like a lot of the CS players who just uh, had zero knowledge about uh, Valorant at all, and like they like hit instantly red and like immortal like mm -hmm. back in the days. Mm -hmm. And right now they even can can come to the um, pro teams easily. Like for example, yeah. uh, Nitro came to like uh, hundred teams, and like he, yeah. I, gu I guess he not even played Valorant that much. Or Stewie 2K. Like there's a lot of the pro, pro players, especially from NA, who just came without any experience in like this type of games. Like Overwatch, Apex, whatever. They just was like uh, they just been a pro player in CS, and they instantly became a pro player in uh, Valorant instantly just because of the pure mechanics. Of course, people can say, "Oh, but like you, they know how like um, how to play in the team. They know like defense, all the stuff." Yeah, sure. But they, I guess there is no race rock in the CS:GO. I, I guess there is no like uh, jet updrafting there or something like CS in terms of like um, tactic utils is much easier because like mm. basically like. Uh, it's, like y you can play like one map on CS in uh, like high ranks like ten times, and you're already gonna understand like probably like ninety percent of you. Because it'll be uh, exactly the same every single yes, time, right? Yes, <laughs> like there there is not that much of the like sure like, like in the pro in the pro scene, of course there is like some like crazy rounds with like some. Uh, but like when it comes to like at least rank, like for the, as I said, like face it, like there's like ten games on one map is enough to realize every single pattern. Like you're gonna yeah. you're gonna be ready for every single flash, for every single smoke, uh, nade, uh, molly timing, whatever. Meanwhile in Valorant, bro, <laughs> one uh, one agent and comp changes, <laughs> GG. You don't know anything. <laughs> it's still same map, but now there is no kill, there is cipher, and there is like some one way cages, there is like kill traps, whatever. Like what are you gonna do?
Mm. So like it, it 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 takes much more time, but as I said, just pure mechanics is already enough to hit like this like plateau of immortal. Like you're never gonna get much more, but like in get, getting immortal is already enough. I think so it's just it, it, it just gives you more variance, right? It's all all it does increase the variance, but if you're you know you're taking the right fights and you're taking them well, your your mechanics are good. Then ultimately, like you're gonna have more success than you're not, right? You're going to rank up. You just have to play a lot of games, right? I mean, I think I think that's yes, often the, often a big part of it too. I I, I always uh, trying to suggest people uh, treat uh, esports and like all the games uh, if they want to improve as a gym. For example, yeah. like uh, when you're coming to the, when you come to the gym, you usually focus like on few things. Like you like you have like leg day or like arms mm, day, whatever. Mm, mm. Sa- same comes to Valorant. Like okay, this day I want to focus more on the like, micro things. Okay, I'm gonna watch some, some demos. I'm gonna try this new agent. I'm gonna try to play this uh, new sport for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna for mm. example practice to playing side on killjoy and ascent instead of b as they usually do so mm-hmm. i'm gonna have at least like some understanding of the game now on the a side uh or like there is like uh, arms day for example when you're just playing okay this day I'm just gonna spam rain every single day uh, every single game so i i go, i'm gonna build this um uh, uh, how to say it confidence I, I, i'm gonna mm-hmm. build this confidence mm-hmm. so i'm not scared to take the fight i'm uh, I'm willing to sacrifice myself, but at least the, the, my team gonna get some like trade or entry. It's not even that uh, bad if you just get traded and you didn't kill, but like your teammate traded you because like in attack side four v four it's still like uh, better for attack side because like especially like big big maps like Sunset or Lotus, there is like uh, there's like so so uh, so long rotations that like uh, getting traded four v four is actually so good for attack side. Mm, mm, so. Mm. When it, when it comes to like practicing and ranked, you don't even have to put this like ton, tons of hours in like aim lab, coax, uh, shooting range. There is like I'm I'm not saying that it's like bad or like whatever, but like uh, it's uh, actually much easier at this point when you're, like trying to reach mechanics level, like uh, this like plateau at my mechanics level on Emoto. You don't have to put this much uh, hours on like uh, aim labs or whatever. You just have to play. Just want to play the fucking game, right? But, yes, exactly. <laughs> because not not only gonna be like when you're playing aim labs, it actually helps you to like just build the understanding how you have to move your mouse mm. you don't have to like mm. always like uh, do it like this you have to like uh, build more like uh, smooth aim mm. uh, all the stuff like uh, d- don't be like um, uh, hectic with your movement but the point is what was uh, always better for like upcoming players so, like for people who just started playing the game to just focus on Valorant without any aim trainers and even the shooting range just because at the same time with aim you're gonna learn how to move. You're gonna learn how to pre-fire the angles. You're gonna learn how to uh, put, uh, put the better cross uh, cross area placement. There's a lot of the things at the same time. Uh, yeah, and I'm not even including the like, util ones, like micro things, just mm-hmm. just based mm-hmm. on mechanics. You don't get it from uh, aim lab or like empty mechanics. Yeah, exactly right. You have to take everything into into your mind when you're doing that, right? I think that's something that actually makes this game so hard is there's so many things you've got to be thinking yeah, about in one moment, yeah. right? But also what makes it so fun, and I think why why we all love it so much is because yeah. there's so much depth to it. I, I also wanted to ask the question, because as well, like, you, you know, you're playing at these high ranks a lot and, and you see these kind of, I guess, you know, I think kind of the audience that I'm aiming at a lot of the time as well is is the kind of tier three players, right? These people that are maybe top 1K, top top 2K, you know, like they're kind of immortal three and, and they're like, they're just not quite at that level where, I mean, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're kind of on that yeah, cusp yeah. of kind of making that jump, right? To to being like a competitive, a kind of like a tier two, maybe even tier one level in terms of like ranked ability, right? Yeah, I, I see. How, how, how would you kind of, what, what are the kind of the most common things that, that you see in ranked that you think, God, this guy's really holding himself back, right? Like what are the mistakes oh, that sure. you think they're making yeah, I, that would take them I, from top 1K to like top 200, for example? I see it. I used to be the same type of guy before I came to the boot camp on 2K, like uh, like April this year, uh, April the last year. Uh, I used to be the same guy. Like I had like uh, my most uh, achieved rank was like 500 Tilo on uh, Immortal. It was like I was like one win away from getting Radiant, and I never get back to it. I was like 300, 400 Tilo always, and like. Mm. Uh, the the things uh, b- behind this like wha- usually like if you come for if you're talking for example for like pro players uh, that's mm. like th- there is a lot of pro players who's like uh, right now playing in VRC like before the like before the tier two the, the tier three level and there is a lot of them who's not even like never re- never reached the gradient mm. and it doesn't mean that like they're bad at the game or like whatever like don't understand it because the idea or because uh, ranked and the pro player is the two different worlds and like we both know this yeah uh, the g- if, if you're talking about uh, ranked and like you this like Immortal tree guy who's like always motor tree and you h- have to and you want to reach the gradient for example and there's like two main advices for me first one is communication because bro 
they it's insane how much you have to micromanage in the gang being that's crazy like you literally have to be this guy who's uh, going to raid on world of warcraft uh, say literally everything call literally every <laughs> single ritual in the game they've been days when i was like the, I, I was grinding there for uh, ranked uh, for for agent on like uh, my smooth account on uh, streams and like Tuki in like uh, summer and when I get it, uh, it was like late uh, late season, so I had uh, to get not 550, but like 750 euro, like because like uh, the guy. Um, yeah, the radio. Yeah, because up, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So it was insane. I lost my mental so much these days. So I was literally <laughs> jumping around PC every day on stream. Like I couldn't believe how much people don't even think behind the YouTubes. Like so, mm -hmm. just just don't uh, don't bother yourself like trying to explain everything, but just like if if you see that like. People like just not listening to you. Like I mean, in the, like in the big, big term, for example, like you call the default. Uh, the, the, like there is a guy who forgot about the default. Like, like he just went uh, to uh, pick meat, uh, meat and diet on us and whatever. Like he probably don't even know what default means. Mm -hmm. Like don't mm -hmm. uh, don't try to don't try to uh, be the like coach for them. Just try to like ask them for things. Like uh, uh, can you like come you here? Can you flash yeah. here for me? Can yes, you push this yeah, with exactly. me? Can you play yeah, a crossfire exactly. with me? Yeah, right. Yes, ju just ask. Never, ne never be a captain for them because, like, that—that's the second thing uh, what I was talking about uh, in mm -hmm. this, like. Uh, it's like heading for this title. Never be a captain for your team and rank. Don't don't treat them as you like players and you like coach for them. Because like when you're gonna uh, give them commands, it's never gonna work. The people have so much ego at these ranks. People never gonna listen to you if you're just gonna come uh, in the voice and say, okay, uh, flash this, flash this, come here, come here. No, you have to ask them, can you come here? So please, I'm gonna give you a drop next round if you come. So <laughs> like whatever, <laughs> like something like this. It's literally, it's it's working like that. It's just uh, like human psychology because uh, as mm. I said, people have so so much ego these days like in, uh, in Valorant in these ranks so you just have to get a like uh, good environment for them like in uh, voice chat the second thing uh, uh, besides the ma micromanaging stuff I guess it's just uh, focus on yourself so much in terms of like don't, don't think that like people are gonna win the round for you don't think that people are gonna win the game for you never treat them as like it's it's it sounds a little bit of egoistic but surely it's just in the long term it helps you so much mm -hmm. to get through mm -hmm. like radiant at least because like you don't have to treat these people as they're actually all willing willing to win the game 80 percent of people who's uh, launching the game like in ranked not on don't every round, even on even on radiant Trust mm. me, even Radiant, like 80% of the time, people don't care at all, even the pro players usually, especially the pro players, actually, because, mm. like, they already get signed. What's the point of getting ranked? Like, usually they don't care. Like, uh, some of them actually care, but, like, it's just because, like, they have a like, competitive mentality, uh, as I do. But, mm. like, usually mm. people just don't care. They, like, launch rank because, like, they want to, like, uh, uh, spend time in Valorant, but, uh, but they don't have a skins at this moment, so, like, they have to play. Uh, and people don't care that much of it, so like just focus on yourself. You like, for example, Saigetsu actually have a like good thing. For example, and like Vuk, there, there's a lot of the examples. Just basically, all of them is like uh, side anchors players. Like Saigetsu, Vuka, Shuchiwawa, all these players, they like to play on themselves. Don't don't trust any of the teammates, and mm. I, usually a lot of times they saving. Why why it's actually good for, like. N not baiting, but actually saving. Why it's like, uh, for example, if you're playing like B side on Killjoy on Ascent. On like immortal tree, high, uh, like high, high immortal tree level, and like you see that your team is getting uh, destroyed on A side every single round. You're coming to you coming to A side, and it's not helping uh, you too much. Like people still losing the side, whatever. Come to B side and like make sure that you're gonna protect B side. If enemy teams comes to B side, okay, round one. If they come into A side, safe. Because next time, if they're gonna come to B side, at least you're gonna have a gun to protect yourself. <laughs> you're not. You're, it's it's literally works like that. Like. Same comes for like Jet, like uh, just uh, like few times, just if you think that like, okay, this round is over, it's like 3v5 already, like don't even try to rotate with Operator, just save Operator for next time. Just, uh, win, uh, just save this uh, win probability for the next round. Mm -hmm. This round is like, because it's so hard to play uh, retakes on this, uh, like on this uh, level of game, because like people, half of the times people don't care, and other uh, times people don't, Think that they have to talk that much, and you, you just have like hectic utils like Omen gonna flash the same uh, spot where it's like bridge done, like because they both both of them de decide not to say anything. Because neither of them anything. said anything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like it, it's pointless. You just you have to like focus on yourself more. So like in this in situations where you can call something, sure. You even like, bro. Like I'm staying on B. <laughs> it's just it's, it's just pissing me off so much. I'm staying on B side on like uh, Viper or Cipher or whatever, and, like on all, all of these games like right now and. I just have a like huge map. That's actually one of the advices. Just get a huge map so like you can see uh, everything yeah. from the, any part of the map, and just 
you, if you see that there is nothing on your side happening, like minute 40, people called, oh, it's it's a rush, it's a rush. Fucking and usually, run. Could, <laughs> yes, it, it's it's probably actually a rush. Like in, usually people not faking anything. Just open the map and start calling shit for them. Like start saying, okay. The, the, there is a Sova Recon backside. There is like a, a Sova doing whatever. You can see the things on the map, but people are still not calling it. Call it for themselves. Just whatever. Like say the things because you are not in the fight. You don't have to focus on your crosshair. Focus mm -hmm. on those things. It actually works in the pro, uh, pro, pro play too. Like mm -hmm. uh, like in energy right now, we have like uh, there there is a people who calling the like if you died for example. Yeah, even the yeah, pro play yeah. in T one, and you see your teammate uh, getting fucked on site. Just call the YouTube for for himself. Like uh, I don't know. Like. Uh, you, uh, for example, I don't know, D uh, Demon One getting fucked on mid because like there is a geek and there is a drone, everything. At least say it. Okay, there is a soul on mid. Like just say yeah, it for yeah, for the whole yeah. team. So at least they're gonna understand the whole thing. Because like all of them is not focusing on the map either. Like uh, there, there is a other guy who's watching B man. There is a other guy who's watching A man with cipher cam. So like he he have to make sure that he's not gonna miss anything. He's not gonna look at the map. Mm -hmm. You're dead already. Say the things. Just that you have nothing to do. Mm. I think there's a. A lot of really good advice there, right? So yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. I want to, I, I, I guess, kind of move on from that topic and ask yeah. and, and ask about how did you end up getting the kind of job at NRG, right? Because I, I remember Chet put out this kind of the, the tweet, right? It was a tweet. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure lots of people saw it. Um, just saying, oh, yeah, do this, do this thing. Um, how did you end up with the role? Uh, I'm pretty sure he don't care if I'm gonna like uh, explain all the stuff. So whatever, like I, I can probably explain the whole thing how it's happened. Uh, there was an application from chat uh, in like mid November, if I'm not mistaken, and there was like three uh, three things that I had to do to apply: uh, make analysis of the energy PX game. Uh, there was second one is make two lineups on so on sunset and the third one was uh, make the analysis of Chichu, the uh, Edward gaming player, on Viper on Sunset. Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't done the first and I haven't done the third one. I just do the two, uh, I just did two <laughs> solo lineups and I even didn't even send to him. I just replied to the same tweet and said, uh, I, I still remember it. I, I just recorded the two solo lineups. I replied to this tweet with two solo lineups. He replied, not even like in DMs. And I said, bro, you can DM me next time. Uh, that's literally what I uh, done, nothing. He, I, I'm pretty sure he didn't even like this tweet or like whatever. He maybe he didn't even saw this tweet. That's the point. Uh, later this, uh, la later the same year, I guess in the, like late December, if I'm not mistaken, he just messaged me in DMs and said like if I'm LFT, if I'm available, or whatever. And that's how we he, how we work. I didn't even apply to this thing. The, we got the second analyst in our team, like uh, uh, Yibo Slice, the actually the guy who applied and uh, got uh, got the job from this application. Like Chad just went to the all the applications and choose him. Mm. But I, I just I just came probably because like he just knew me because of the lineups and all the stuff. Mm. I never up, I officially applied for this thing. Do you think uh, in some ways the the content you're creating also helps? I mean, as a, as a kind of asset to an organization. Oh yeah, sure. Like uh, mm -hmm. uh, for for example, like in my last talk. Uh, there was a pretty good money that I was getting just from the content creator. Like I, I had mm. like two contracts signed. I was just uh, I had a contract signed as a co coach, like uh, analyst, whatever. And the second contract I had a uh, signed as a content creator. And mm. um, you can even see it like uh, when I announced that I was going to LFT this year, like uh, in uh, November, I guess I put this LFT post. Mm. Uh, there was a like. There, there, were, there was an description that I was still contracted with Fireflux. I had no buyout, but I was signed as a content creator because I still mm. had a content creator, content running in. So like I was just put on the content creator team without like being a coach or like whatever. I was just not in Wallen department at all. So maybe that can be actually a future for me too. Like maybe not a player, maybe just a full content creator in energy or whatever. Because like I know energy focused on content a lot and like mm. I actually like what they do. Like they, we, had a, we have a lot of content creators too in the sign it in the rock. And may maybe that can be a future. I don't know because but right now I'm fully committed in the uh, analyst job. Like I work a lot of the times right now. I don't put that much work in Twitter right now. I had like few bangers whatever, but like I don't I don't focus on it. I just uh, probably gonna do content on like uh, TikTok maybe. I gonna focus yeah. more on TikTok, and in Twitter I just gonna like shit post whatever. <laughs> the shit posts work though, right? That's the thing. Yeah, actually, I mean, the, the whole I, Twitter I, about shit well, posting. <laughs> I, I I mean I saw this just the just earlier. I was looking looking through your tweets. What was it you said? Um, 
uh i can't it was some shit it was some shit post it was oh oh no oh, it was about pal world the pal world tweet oh the they pal got world. like yeah, eleven thousand yeah, yeah. likes yeah. and i was yeah, like it was, yeah. <laughs> it was like what the fuck you know yeah. pal world if you want to play uh, with uh, animals with weapons just go <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. And i just thought i just thought like so many people will yeah. relate to that experience right as yeah. we've already talked about i mean i think i think i think we kind of like settled that really well yeah yeah that's the point that's the point of twitter because like you don't have to actually focus on content like the, the actually twitter is so bad in this case because like <laughs> bro, like half of the, like my ma most uh, like hit tweets for example like I get, yeah mo my most liked twitter was like 44,000 likes or something mm. it was just me replying to the highlight of skaggy the guy from bleed uh, he had like crazy highlight on heaven when in, this, in the last match to qualify to franchising on yeah, heaven like yeah. it was on Omen, like one with five or something I, I just literally like what tweeted with words like, bro, this highlight is crazy. It was one before. It was like the last round of this map for qualifying for franchise. Like, yeah, I basically yeah, yeah. I just put a context for it and that's it. And it got like 44,000 likes. I didn't do anything. I just write things <laughs> on top of the video already that was created not even by me, posted not on my account and the highlight was not even done by me either. Like <laughs> that's the whole Twitter about. But the thing is, it just, it took you a little bit of effort to do that, right? To add yeah, that context. Yeah, I mean, and I think that makes people's lives easier. And I, and I think yeah. in some ways, people often don't realize that actually most stuff you do for like kind of content creation, I, I've come to realize this is the simple, the, the dumber the person can be to understand it, the better the content's going to be, right? That's like, how TikTok and Twitter works, basically, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i guess actually this kind of this kind of leads well quite kind of into the the, the the next question i wanted to ask you was kind of how, how how come i would be really interested to kind of see you do more like analysis stuff like longer form youtube videos is part of the reason you haven't done that because you don't think it'll be successful as content or you're just not as interested in doing that uh sh there, there is a one thing that it's kind of person not going to be successful as the lineup thing uh mm. they, they, it, it is like on this kind of same viewership as the you know, lineups at this moment because like lineups kind of plateaued because like there is like not that much like being honest there is like the last actually huge lineup based engine that it's actually like works and not like dog shit is fate like uh, the, uh, and it's actually crazy because Gek, where's your deadlock uh, lineups where's your deadlock lineups <laughs> I, I had i had deadlock lineups like <laughs> that's the point I, and they, they hit kind of good like they, yeah they, they, there was some like this uh, five hundred thousand views whatever but like all of them is shit. like uh, <laughs> it, it it just looks good it just looked good uh, uh like on paper like for example i had the lineup when i like i, I could throw the deadlock wall on us and from a main as attacker side to back gen and this guy who was playing gen he was just uh, stacked in the behind, behind the gen because of the uh, deadlock wall <laughs> it looks so funny but it's never gonna work <laughs> so like uh in terms in terms of like analyst content uh there's like one guy who doing an insane job it's teats if i'm not teats, mistaken yeah uh, yeah it is that that's actually insane it's like uh like th there is some other ones like thinking man one, thinking man wallagant and uh, elevate uh both of them do doing the gate stuff yeah, but there's like, another uh, there's they... another person as well but yeah 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 Aaron, but, like, Aaron as well he yeah yeah yeah, really good stuff. yeah 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 Oh, but all of them like not in like the same type of viewership because like they're trying to do more of the like high level analysis like they they i mean mm. they don't focus that much on marketing like they basically doing the same thing that i was doing like back in the days like in august slash september when like before i hit a big like they just do pure stuff like pure pure analysis like there is for example the reason why it's hitting that that big because like you're doing like more like childish content there's like some sketches there there's like some mm. uh, he just uh, laughing about something, making some jokes. Like there's some. It's the production there's, quality, there's, right? Yeah, it's it's how entertaining it is. is. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's actually uh, because it's like, uh, as I said, it's like very good mi uh, mix of both things. Like people mm. who just wants to laugh and like uh, watch some relevant, they can watch this. There's like some some kind of good jokes. I'm I'm not judging their humor, like bro, just like whatever. Like mm. there, there, there there is jokes in these videos, let's say. Uh, <laughs> and at the same time, the, if people want to look at some analysis like take a look whatever like maybe you don't want to spend like 40 minutes watching like just pure world of like cloud nine playing like food versus footballist on the uh, sunset whatever yeah, and you've you replayed the round three videos. times because you were trying to understand exactly yeah, all of the yeah, util yeah. In, in this and one just execute. look at the map like look at the left left uh, the top corner of the map like what, what, what the fuck is that so like you can just watch the tits video he's gonna explain like kind of like at least basic stuff kind of person he explained basic stuff kind of person i'm not saying that like he knows everything and like mm. he's the best analyst in the world but surely he knows like enough stuff to like put it in the youtube video so people are gonna understand something about the game that's mm. actually good and you don't have to do more because like as i said like uh, there is people who are doing already more job and it's not like quite successful because like uh, the, uh, i guess it still was uh, like the 
Proplex mm, still yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What, what was doing this exact same thing, like uh, proving the exact same point. Like uh, there is a Valorant competitive subreddit, uh, mm, and he was mm. posting his videos of analyzing teams, and <coughs> it is, I, I guess like few of his uh, Reddit posts get deleted because like it's just not the not. Um, yeah, they count it as advertising or something on Reddit, right? Like they yeah, don't like yeah, it if yeah, you post yeah. your content there. It's completely yeah, insane. It, it, yeah, because th th at the same time, if you just post a funny video, okay, I it's fine. But if you post analyzing, like trying to educate people, nah, it's not work, bro. Like because nobody want to actually ed educate themselves in Valorant. Like, mm. and the, it's actually so easy to put because like all the lineup stuff is so fun and like uh, so successful because you're not actually just trying to improve yourself. You just know lineups. That's it. Like it's not actually improving your um, macro things. It's more, uh, I mean, uh, micro things. It's more. It's more about like macro. The, the point is, uh, with analyzing stuff, is just you have to actually use your brain and think. With lineups, you, mm. you can just replicate the same thing and that's it, whatever. You don't even have to like actually think behind it, like why you have to use this lineup when. Uh, in terms of like analyzing, okay, wh why I have to play this default round? Should I play there? Like, should I should I get it? Whatever. Like, people don't actually like to think about this stuff. Like, they just want to kill Valorant and that's <laughs> it. Like, pick Reina. Yeah. Like, so, it's, I mean, it's, it's not quite successful. Picking Rainer is good advice if you want to kind of get a high rank, but if you actually yeah. want to know about the game and play at a professional level, not not so yeah. useful. I think you've come to a really interesting point here that I guess part of the reason that I kind of, again, do this podcast is I think I think people think it will be easy, right? And that they don't have to apply themselves, right? They don't have to think. They could just play and they'll magically become a pro player, right? Yeah. And it'll just all it'll all work out, right? And the, and then they meet and then they meet the first thing when they just come to like uh, the, there is actually a lot of these players like that like who just yeah. came for like top top, top ten leaderboard and they just like drop like five kills on the first game versus like top two, uh, top top mm. one teams because like they just don't know anything like they they have they never get double picked in their life. <laughs> They they hear the, they, they hear his teammate calling three to one and they think what round is zero? Why are you trying hard? Out, right? Stop try harding! Stop try yeah, harding! It's, it's just ranked. Yeah, like <laughs> they don't even know about this. Like so, yeah, it's, it's a completely different world. Uh, ranked playing and uh, pro games. Yeah, I don't think I don't know if people. I think I think the thing is people don't realize, and I also think that part of that as well is that people will train themselves into bad habits, right? They will learn to solo peak because it works in ranked, and then they'll come into even like a tier three game, right? And the guys do, uh, you know, they've got a retake that they know works. They put all their util down, and it's kind of covered most, of, you know, it's got good site coverage, and they're just like, oh well, I just got fucked, and three guys came around and peaked me simultaneously, and I just <laughs> died, and you know, they they never even thought that, that that could happen do you ever think we'll reach a time in valorant where people will that where the people in the highest ranks will give more of a shit where people will actually want to apply because i think in cs and certainly certainly in like mobas right if i'm playing dota and i'm high elo everyone is like fucking full try hard right like it's yeah. like it's like i'm playing in a tier three team yeah but valorant it's it's not like that do you think we'll ever yeah. see that change uh, so there is like three things and the, like all of them is just uh, completely uh, just by riot games like if they want to okay they can do but uh, the point is like the whole game came with the whole statement like it's just a competitive game we don't we, we're not even willing to make it like fun again whatever like there is like mm. swift play okay like you you can play it but like we mainly focus on ranked we just like it's the whole thing like basically like if you're not playing ranked there is nothing to do in Valorant legit like people who play swift play mm. bro I swear to God, like you're in different breed. Like <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Uh, so there's three things that Riot Games have to change so people are actually gonna try hard that much. As like for example, in, like Dota high ranks. The first one is maybe made, like th there's like three solutions. Let's say the first one is like uh, come to CS state, make the FPL type thing with like there is like leaderboard and like for example like top hundred players getting paid for it. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. it's not going to work because, oh, there is going to be a tutor, surely. Yeah. So how are we going to make it uh, exactly as uh, FPL? Just invite, uh, like, make uh, another hub, like another champion's queue, if I'm not mistaken. They already have something like that in League. Like, just make the, uh, another ranked queue where it's, like, only people who is in Tier 1 mm. and Tier 2. Only mm. signed pro players who is, like, uh, in VCL or VCT circuit. That's it. And uh, if you actually want to, like, uh, for, for example, you can be signed as a six player and you're not even playing officials, but at least you can play this thing and, like, get some money for it. There is an FPL thing in the, in the CSGO right now. Uh, 
same thing, just sign it for a place and, si and some of the people who just qualified from like qualifications, they, they can add this thing too, like just mm. some quals to this thing. And th there is like guy, I know him in real life, the Vikedia, like the Turkish player from Eternal Fire, is like T1 Turkish team in CS. This guy won it uh, the, the, the whole season three times in a row, four times, I guess three times right now. And mm. he got like $5,000 each time or seven, uh, 7000 mm. $7,000 each time, three months in a row. He, he getting basic like um, low uh, like extra salary bonus ba yeah he, he, he getting base level of franchising salary right now because like uh, people getting sas kind of this money if, like if they getting like the low, low, low lowest pay cut like around this around this mm. uh, type of money so like uh, that's actually a very good uh, thing to uh, stimulate people to actually like, care in the end yeah. so like you j so for example like ten, uh, top ten top 10 leaderboard gonna get like qualifications for this like uh, FPL thing, like uh, this uh, pro hub thing, whatever. Well, I uh, presumably this is kind of the idea of Premier, right? Yeah, yeah, but the, the, the problem with Premier is that you actually have to like find uh, all the four humans to play with you. Like there is like, and mm. being a valiant player and have a lot of friends, whoa, 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 whoa that's a like, quite challenging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like Premier, but, but invite just for only. solo queue yeah just yeah. for solo queue yeah yeah just for solo queue and for uh, second thing there's the, there's a second solution because in dota they don't have fpl and it still works somehow well in dota because like uh, ganked uh, ganked means a lot in dota like for example there's like t1 teams like almost every single t1 team in dota right now because i, I i'm kind of uh, knowledge about the dota too so mm. there's like almost every single team in Dota right now have at least one or even two or even three players who got just signed just based uh, based purely on ranked experience like yeah instantly signed there's like uh, they saw they saw oh this guy is like top one right now you get him on tryout the two, two three out days GG he signed it that's it mm. Mm. It's, uh, you don't even have to play one official because uh, and the problem is like why it works like that in Dota because like in the, I guess in Dota you have to understand uh, like. If you are in top high uh, uh, elo player, like uh, top ten or like top hundred, you ha to to be on this level on Dota, you have to understand much more than in Wallet. You actually have to be crazy, yeah. Well, yeah. and it's also I think partly what we've kind of said said before that they're already playing like they're a pro team, right? Yeah, in the yeah, ranked yeah. games. So yeah. if you're performing at that level, you you really could perform at that level yeah. on stage. Well. There, 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 there is people like, and uh, I'm not saying it's perfect system because, like, in the, uh, for example, in Dota, there is like uh, there is still uh, ill inflation system, for example, because like uh, they don't have like Riza at all, like basically, yeah. like they, uh, eight years ago, the top hundred it was like five or six, like six thousand uh, ill rate, uh, and right yeah. now it's like twelve thousand. Yeah, yeah, it's like I've... doubled. Yeah, when I was playing, I think like yeah, I was like six k, and I think like people were eight k. You know, eight k was yeah, like yeah, yeah, eight k yeah. was like you're a like top tier professional player, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and, and now it's like twelve thousand MMR. Like what? <laughs> so like I, at, le at least we don't have this thing in Valorant. But yeah. uh, the the point the point is that like it still happens like in Dota like there is like uh, people who's like not communicating at all, like playing fuel mood with chat whatever. Mm. Like uh, even on top hundred, like you on yeah, like, yeah, yeah. top ten, but like one or two people, whatever, maybe, yes. That actually happens. It's just like, you can't change humans. Uh, the point is like, uh, just, you have to make sure that people are gonna get something in, uh, in trade for just grinding yeah. it. Because right now you're getting nothing from it. Like literally nothing. You have to make, like, uh, stimulate people to try hard and ranked. And the problem is the uh, current ranked system in Valorant that like, besides getting like, uh, ranked, uh, ranked uh, gun body, like mm -hmm. radiant, there is like nothing. Especially because like, there's like one more uh, one, one, one more thing because like it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter anything if you got top top 500 or, or top 10 like literally nothing if you don't care about like getting famous whatever mm. nothing yeah like, you, you it's, it's, you're getting the same guy like um, ranked gun body like just you you reach the red end whatever uh, you're not getting like any like at least one end points whatever literally make yeah. anything okay like, something which would cost uh, them nothing right just to give yeah. you a thousand vp or whatever yeah yeah like to top ten top ten people gonna get like free bundle like the last the latest bundle like top hundred people gonna get like some valiant points whatever like that literally cost them nothing but at least gonna stimulate people to play the game uh, or uh, maybe just as i said like make like uh, qualifications like like for like uh, pro hub whatever because like th th there is like one more uh, one more thing happening right now because like uh, we already had like few pro hubs and like uh, I was uh, like part of the latest one and all of them dying instantly because mm. first one you you riot, riot games literally uh, not letting you to uh, pay the money for people like you can't uh, have a price pool in these leaks like uh, third, pa third party leaks can't have a price pool Riot don't let you to do this thing because uh, they uh, 
afraid that it's gonna take uh, so much people uh, to play this thing instead of Valorant uh, ranked game system. Yeah. Uh, I can't like, understand them, but like you have to make like uh, d solution for this, not just like uh, cut this off and like mm. whatever. Like because right now they just cut this thing off and like not not making any uh, or better solution. And uh, yeah, that's very cute. Like we, we had a target pro hub, same thing. It died because it mm. had no press pool. Nobody is trying. Yeah. Yeah, it's a challenge, isn't it? It's it's a really 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 hard one to uh, to solve. But hopefully. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's gonna uh, actually the the at least the replay system. Like, uh, hopefully, it's gonna it's gonna come one year, like maybe ten years later. At one point, it's gonna come. So it's been so uh, long, right? I remember them saying, "Oh yeah, replay system coming soon." <laughs> I think they even at one point said it's coming next year, which would should have been last year, right? Yeah, um, but, it, I mean, but it never uh, came. There the, 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 the was too too much uh, things that the yeah, outside and it's never happened. But I was like, uh, I mean, it's like it. It works like uh, all of us made like pr promises and uh, like a few times like just forgot to do things like it's happening whatever yeah i mean uh, give them to give they, them they it, they're working on it kind of i know in fact they're working on it like th that's maybe inside for like some people whatever they work on it at least they at least they care like let's say like it's actually in works like p there is a people sign it to do exactly like replay system so yeah and i, I think people like g give them some slack right like currently we're basically in a global recession right like there's, oh, there's yeah, sure. not much money there's been huge layoffs at all of these companies yeah. i mean they probably just don't have the people right i i, I hope the replay department doesn't do, they didn't get layoffed <laughs> yeah let's hope let's hope uh, we can we can we can only hope so i guess kind of like for the for the, for the final bit of this I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh kind of your expectations for next season with nrg and kind of what you'd like to see uh so the season is gonna start like in two weeks basically like in 12 days from the day when we're recording this uh about expectation i'm not sure actually because like for example we have a crazy roster like they, mm. they I, I don't even have to like praise them a lot like we have a, like three three massive winners and two i, I mean we have a, like four massive winners like the uh, jimmy and like uh, mouth uh, crashes and uh, i forgot the nicknames imagine that <laughs> Crash is mouth and Chet were won the Masters and uh, Victor, Victor, yeah, Vic. Uh, I, he just used to have a different nickname. That's uh, that's why I always forget the his nickname. Like he used to be a foot. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have like four Masters winners and we have uh, two champions winners and the la the, the latest champions. Like it's mm, so mm. so like it's actually crazy roster. Like um, uh, Ethan and Demon one uh, plus. Uh, you have a king of liners in here, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know that's going to be in the thumbnail, Vlad. That's going to be oh, in the yeah, thumbnail. Sure. Lineups master plus. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, in in terms of expectation, uh, we have to at least like play a few games, so we, like understand our, our like uh, strength in terms of officials. Skins been kind of prom promising, like actually like very good. Like uh, th there is some people like to say about like skin bugs, whatever. Like oh, like this team sucks, this team not. But people don't even understand that people can like try things or like mm. uh, play in mm. some conditions that is not like just like for example like there is some skins that you play not even to win. Maybe like try to some like very different things, like full new comp or like uh, yeah. whatever. Like only one person can call for this scrim, like. <laughs> Like now, I, sh I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if we had like uh, ever this thing. I guess uh, we're like more vocal team, but like usually, yeah, there, there, there is some teams that like uh, literally like we're t testing some case and always like that. For example, like if we talk about like kind of this energy core, like optic mm. uh, back in the days when like uh, it was like area of optic, be, uh, like before the franchising, optic used to suck a lot of the screams like when they were coming to Europe, and it's normal because like you're just trying to test stuff, and like sometimes mm -hmm. actually enemy team can play like so dumb that like it's impossible to win versus them. Like it happens a lot because like for example, what they're gonna do? What they're gonna do when you just already uh, started the scream and the enemy team just plays like twelve rounds in a row A side fast push. Meanwhile, you're trying like some B side setup, like or like mid fight setup, <laughs> and you're playing constant <laughs> retake on A side. Like what are you gonna do? Of course you're gonna lose this side at least. So. It's just it's, it just happens sometimes. Like you mm. you can't just try to win every single scheme, and you don't have to. That's the point. Like uh, there is some people that like to play like uh, low tier teams before the tournament starts, like right, right after, like right, right, right before it, like few days before. So mm. at least they're gonna get this confidence. Get some confidence. But yeah. yeah, but I'm pretty sure we have like a lot of confident people in this team. At least the one I'm for sure. Like Demon One is, bro. <laughs> he have a lot. He have enough confidence to gear to spread to the whole team. It's gonna be enough. Mm. So. Mm. Uh, I hope I hope we're gonna win the kickoff tournament and go to Madrid and I guess we have a lot of chances to do it. 
I I like our group, and the the second group is group of death. Like the group B is group of death. That's crazy. But like, who cares? <laughs> we in not, group A, so. not not your problem. <laughs> yeah, not our problem. We're playing in group A, so like we don't have like be best teams ever like our group. Like we do, we don't have to uh, fight for for death to like. That's actually crazy because like uh, if I'm not mistaken, like uh, one or I guess one or two teams out of group B and like not gonna qualify like in any way like because mm, like mm. Dude, like it's like not possible yeah I'm yeah i think that's so the like, format right so yeah that's yeah, pretty yeah, because of the format, that's great. pretty harsh but yeah but it's I just mean, supposed like, to be a small tournament right i guess yeah, in, in yeah, riot size it's like it's oh just yeah kick well off, so it's kick off, yeah. So, yeah just to get everyone hyped again and anyway it's like actually the like sliga uh like uh, there's actually a good video from sliga about like the whole format right now because like mm. uh, like the point system, like uh, everyone look at this because like uh, point system is kind of strange, but like I'm, I'm not gonna judge it. It's just it's just strange, let's say. Yeah, it's different, I think, generally from what we've had in oh, most yeah, other esports, right? Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something I think that we're not very familiar with. I don't think it's that uncommon in kind of conventional sports, but it's a little bit it's a little bit different, I think, in esports. Yeah. Um, we're maybe not we're not ready. <laughs> I think for, for something so kind of yeah, complicated. It's actually in it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Or even worse, only playing twelve games in a year. I think that's pretty uh, <laughs> not I mean, ideal. But I mean, there, there is like two opinions about this thing right now. Like uh, in the whole community, there's like some people saying that like uh, people are getting burnout, and we have a case of Fnatic where it's like people was actually burned out because like they just constantly played everything. And there's mm -hmm. like second side mm -hmm. of people who saying, "Bo, there's like some teams in CS that played 1,200 maps in like half of the year, and they're not getting burned out." Well, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not gonna take the sides there. I don't want to like blame one of them. But uh, let's say I, I would prefer the uh, more matches. Well, I think it's different when Most you're having to fly around the world, right? I think that's that's yeah, the difference because sure. I think there's a lot of, uh, particularly like European CS, right? There's still a lot of it's played online, right? So. You don't have to travel. I mean, the I mean, beginning I mean, parts of it, right? They, 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 these people who play two kind of maps in half of the year, surely, like most of them play it online. Yeah, like. Uh, I think that's the that's the challenge, right? That's the difference. Yeah. If you have to if you have to travel around the world every every two every month, right? Every other month you're flying to somewhere else and you've got to change yeah. time zones and all that stuff. Like, I think that that's just not the conducive to people CS being basic, the, the helpful. basically like this, yeah. Like, yeah. The, the, the one CS, like people are getting like one month in home or like something. Usually. Yeah. Yeah, which I don't think is. I mean, you look at other conventional it, sports; that isn't normal, you know. Yeah, it's, it isn't normal. Yeah, like uh, it's hard to find like uh, the best thing to do. Like uh, try something. Like try to find something in between. Like it's just hard. So like at least uh, at least I actually got to, to see that like they trying to do that. Like they they're committed. Like they're not just like saying like okay like uh, some other um, gaming companies, let's say mm. like some <laughs> other games that like just do one stuff and like forget about this game at all. Like. At least they're actually like trying to improve it. So like, uh, mm, mm. Le let's see what's gonna happen next year because like uh, there it was announced like publicly that like there there is like uh, always gonna be more and more improvements in the next and next and next year. Like it's never gonna be like same exact season. Like do do not expect this next year start exactly from the same kickoff format with the same schedule and all that stuff. Yeah, especially so, in tier one, right? I do think they are yeah. really focused on trying to make the tier one scene as sustainable yeah. as possible. So I, I think we'll see. I think we'll kind of see the, the things that we, we, we hope to see, or at least kind of moving in the right direction. Yeah. So I think we're, we're pretty much at time now, Vlad. So I guess if there's anything, anyone you'd like to shout out or any kind of final advice you'd, you'd like to give for people that, you know, really want to take that next step and kind of push towards being pro players, then I'd love to hear it. Mm, so yeah, I would probably take the one more, one more advice. Uh, that was the same advice I give every single year in the off season. And it's going to be the same thing right now because there's like going to be a, like kind of off season for like at least tier two or like maybe like few of the tier one players like in between the first and second split. Mm. First impression is the most important one. You're never gonna get a second chance to get the first impression. Never. Make sure to come up in time, even before the time. Like, if you have opportunity to like uh, have a tryout and people said okay, come at like 4 p.m. Come to disco at like half or like 3:30 or like something. Just do, make sure that people see that you fully committed you want to improve you want to do everything try to talk with everyone after the scheme try to get the like uh, feedback whatever if you actually want to like if, if you just actually want it like you have like no offers like you, you like you want you want to make it like you want to hit it like just try to do everything possible mm. unless like i don't know if you're if you're not if you're not willing to do this then maybe esports is not for you mm. Mm. i think i think that's a important point right it's 
it's all about the sacrifice. Yeah. Because it will definitely. cost a lot to, to kind of make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you so much for your time, Vlad. Yeah, thank and, you too. And best of, luck. best of yeah, luck. Best of luck with NRG next season. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> thank you too.